Should I have to dig into the Bible? I, I'll probably know the verse and recite it before you've said the first three words. Yeah, you have better memory than mine. No, it's not memory. It's not memory. It's something which is a fundamental belief you have. Well, I came here today to, to discuss the preservation of the Quran and... Uh, well, you already discussed with that brother, haven't you? We can discuss the, the, uh, the topic of Jesus at some other time. Are you here next Saturday? Yeah. Or the Saturday after that, maybe? Yeah, I'm, I'm there. Okay, I will... Um, Where, which country are you from? Uh, Poland. Right? Poland. I strongly suggest you read the New Testament. Read verses like John 17, 3, Mark yeah, 10... The, the New Testament. Okay. Mark 10, 17. Uh, Matthew 9, 3. Okay, so, so I asked uh, Ridvan about the preservation of the Quran. What is, what is your opinion? Uh, is your opinion also that the Quran is miraculously preserved? Yeah, we've already spoken letter? about it. I don't want to repeat something we've already... You don't have the knowledge, my friend. You don't want to... With due respect, I don't want to you know, say anything wrong or, or make you feel upset or whatever. I just want to make the point that you're not qualified to speak about that. So you need to be qualified about what you believe in, which you're a Christian, you're a Protestant. You clearly said very eloquently that Jesus is a part of the Trinity. So I've just kindly asked you to provide the evidence. You, can, you should be able to do it like that because it's your fundamental belief. Islam is not your belief, the Bible is. So show to me one verse, all I'm asking you is one verse, just one one. But you shouldn't have to go, you should remember top of your head. You're a Christian, my friend. You shouldn't have to dig into the Bible. I, I will probably know the verse and recite it before you've said the first three words. Yeah, you have better memory than, than mine. No, it's not memory. It's not memory. It's something which is a fundamental belief you have. So you should be able to substantiate that. How are you going to speak to us about the Quran? You don't even know your own scripture in any way, shape or form. You are probably going to say, oh, it was corrupted. Uh, no, no, I'm not going to say. Let's just see first. Uh, don't make assumptions. John chapter one. Yes. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And uh, after many descriptions of the Word, um, in verse 14, John says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So, so he says that the word was from the beginning, the word was with God, and the word was God. So, and the, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. So this clearly says that that uh, Jesus, uh, he is the one who became flesh and made his dwelling among them. He is uh, the pre-existing word who was with God from the beginning, and the word was God. So Jesus indeed was God from the beginning, he, he is God. So you mentioned him being pre-existing, it doesn't say in the passage he was pre-existing. No, no, so I never interrupted, in well, sorry, I never interrupted word, you, please. The word was with now listen, I, I let you speak, I wanted to interrupt, but I let you finish, let me finish. If you want to say something, let me finish, then you speak. So this is what you call, commonly referred to, as the prologue to John's Gospel. Yeah. Prologue means the understanding of the writer of the Gospel who he thought Jesus may be. So these are not Jesus' words, number one. Come on, these are, you know this as well. These are not, this is the writer of John's Gospel taking influence from um, a uh, early historian, the name escapes my mind for one moment. Um, his name is... Uh, yeah, so he lived, he was a contemporary of Jesus. He lived two generations before and he and he referred to Moses in Elohim chapter 7 verse 1 where the reference is made that Moses is God to Pharaoh that's it well done thank you file of Alexandria it just slipped my mind because you know file of Alexandria precisely who lived about um, 60 BC but roughly about that age time, time, time. so in that in that the, inf the, the writer of John's Gospel became influenced by the writings of Philo, who was a Hellenistic Jew, who lived in that contemporary, contemporaneous period. So he's incorporating his understanding on who Jesus would be. It's commonly referred to as a parenthesis. A parenthesis is that, that it wasn't in the original Greek manuscripts, it was something which was added in as an explanatory note. This is what you call a parenthesis. P-A-R-E-N-T-H-E-S-I-S. -E -E so then it makes reference, in the beginning was the word. 
as far as you are concerned, now I've got several refutations to what you're going to say. In the first one, the Word is Jesus, according to you, the Logos. The beginning was the Word, the Logos, Jesus, and the Word was with God. So immediately we see two distinguishing things. The Word was with God, meaning God's expression was with God. Not that, not that Jesus was with God at the beginning, because it says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, He's the firstborn of creation. If you're firstborn, by default, you cannot be eternal. If I'm the firstborn of my family, I'm not eternal. There was a time I never existed. So, let me finish. Well, there are difficulties of translating that. But okay. So, in that word, the Logos, in the 300 usages, yes, in the Bible, Logos is always referred to in the neutral gender. It's never done in the male pro specific pronoun of he or she or whatever. It's always referred to as an it. So, what it is that verse, it's the personification of God's word. God's word becoming manifest later. So it's like Proverbs chapter 8 verse 22, where wisdom literature is personified as if he's speaking. Are you finding what I'm saying to you? Christ further says that the word of, that I speak is not from me, but the word of, is from God who sent me. So he's even saying the word is not from him. The word or is not him. The word is the personification of God. So in the beginning, when the word is with God, Yes, the Logos, and the Word was with God, immediately distinction. And the Word was God. According to your belief, Jesus is not the Father. Jesus is God the Son. But look, at it's called the fallacy of equivocation. What you're doing is you're making the Word to be the Father. In the beginning was the Word, Jesus. And, no, I'm, I'm and, making Je and Jesus was... No, but so this is, no, but this the is what, okay. This so in the beginning, okay. So in the beginning was the Word. So the Word is Jesus. Am I correct? In the beginning was the Word. Am I correct? The Word is Jesus. Yeah, the Word is okay, stop the Son. Okay, so the Logos is Jesus. That's what you believe. So in the was the Word. The Word was with God. Who is God? The Father. So, because they're different, aren't they? Jesus and God are different. So in the beginning was the Word, Jesus. Yeah, thank you. So, so here you have, in the beginning was the Word, who is Jesus. <coughs> and the Word was with God, the Father. And the Word, who is Jesus, is God who is the Father. So what you're saying is the Word the is the Word Father. The is God, but it is not the Father. Now the you, Word is not the Father. Now you've misunderstood. The Word is just God. Aha, this is the issue you've got, you see. Just so let's do it slowly. It, take, it may take some time to understand. It's called the fallacy Sorry, of the... May I, uh, may I um, query you on that... Um, I haven't finished that, but... Yeah, yeah. Sorry? Um, you, you, said, you said something about the product to Jonas Gospel. Yes, that, that yeah. supposedly it wasn't part of the original Codex Sinaiticus. Well, it was just uh, an opinion of John that, that he is. Fantastic point, yes. What, what, is, what is the reference for that? So it's not in the original Codex Sinaiticus. The earliest Greek manuscripts are the Koine Greek. The Koine Greek, you know Koine Greek, don't you? Yeah. The language that the New Testament was written in. In the Koine Greek, there is that that isn't mentioned. Is a, well, there is the, a there is a the modern, manuscript. There is a manuscript variation. The modern translations of the Bible are based on the uh, on the best textual evidence that we have. Uh, they are the te textual critics who study this subject professionally. Yeah. Uh, often give uh, input as to what manuscripts should be used to uh, use as a source to, uh, to publish new translations of the Bible. And uh, so what's the point? I don't it seems what? that uh, these textual critics, these scholars, uh, do see the first of, the first chapter of John the so-called prologue as part of John's Gospel. And, uh, but you haven't shown it, given, nothing you've said has shown it. I've told you, there are, in the Codex Sinaiticus, there are manuscript variants. In the, Cod, in, the, in the Alexandrian Codex, they don't have this. There is no prologue to John's Gospel. And, the, and parenthesis means, parenthesis... I don't know what, what Codex Sinaiticus says exactly. Uh, my point is that uh, 
modern translations of the Bible are based on the best textual evidence that we have uh, according to, to, the, to the assessment of, uh, of professional scholars. And these scholars seem, Which to, scholars? Be, Who seem says? to be of the conviction that uh, that uh, prologue to John's Gospel is part of John's Gospel. Well, like I've already told you, there are manuscript, there, there are manuscript variants in regards to this. Some yeah, but, but, the code, the, the, the but earliest. The fact that, 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 that some uh, late. Uh, no, no, not the later. The of which... <laughs> that's where you're, you're now. That's misinformation. I'm telling you, the Alexandrian texts don't have it's this term. Late. I'm talking about from the co see again. I'm, I'm not trying to. You don't. You don't seem to know your stuff. I know my because I've read in extensively on, on this topic, and I know the history of the compilation of John's Gospel. So I'm telling you, please, I'm not pointing any porkies to you, okay? I'm not trying to pull a fast one and make you fool, no. So what I'm trying to tell you is, furthermore, anything when the word was with God, there is no definite article before was God. It just says, and it's a word is called Theos. Theos is a word which is meant for a God, meaning someone who represents God, just like in John chapter 10, verse 34, which makes mention of Theos as well. So a God, as you know, many people are referred to as gods in the New Testament. In the beginning, so there are many ways of understanding this particular text, but essentially it's a personification of God's word, like wisdom literature. It comes it, from, it's not merely uh, an abstract personification because, because John says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. So he is a concrete being, a concrete person who, who lived among us. And, this is referring to Jesus. Yeah, so that flesh, as I made mention, is something which is enacted much later in the Gospels in the, in the form of Christ being the expression of God's word. That's what it means, my friend. He's the expression of God's word. So, for example, if, if you're my good friend, That's not and I have. Says. The passage says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So, that's what I'm trying to explain to you, my friend. I've tried to show to you the fallacy of equivocation because what you're doing without even realizing is you're making the word who is Jesus to being God who is the Father. Because why have I made that conclusion? Am I making it up in my head? Am I trying to confuse you? Am I trying to confuse the audience? No. It's straightforward, it's straightforward logic because you believe Jesus is the word. The word is with God who is the Father and the word who is Jesus is the Father who is God. That's what you call you're making Jesus to be the Father, which is a heresy. Okay, according to... yeah. Let's do this slowly. It's called the fallacy of equivocation. In the beginning was the Word. So as far as you're concerned, the Word is Jesus. And the Word was with God, meaning Jesus, who is the Word, is with God, who is the Father. It's with the Father who is God. Yeah, excellent. And the Word is God who is the Father. So what you're saying no. is the, no, you're, what you're, God, but, uh, but you've accepted that. Who is the Father? No, because we've already so. agreed. Let me explain it once more because this is a confusion. This shouldn't be straightforward stuff. Look, I'm a bit, so I'm a bit out of breath. Let me explain who last. Is the equivocation fallacy. Yeah, let's have because a look. So when, what? Because when, uh, when, just, when, just, uh, when John says uh, the word was with God, he means the word was with the Father who is God. But he also exactly. says the word was God. So that Meaning word, because we share the divine nature with with the Father, and they they are both God. Yeah. Okay. So the same. we let the audience in because, with due respect, it seems that you've not grasped the point. The point is, and I said last time, just for the sake of expediency. In the beginning was the word. The word is Jesus. And the word was with God. So immediately. Distinguish, distinguishing between the terms. Who is God there? The Father. Because if the word is Jesus, then God has to be the Father. There's no other conclusion to make. I'm and not then, denying that the Father is God. Thank you. But in this context, because they're being distinguished, my friend, therefore the word is Jesus, and Jesus is with the Father who is God. No, in this context, because uh, it follows with the words, and the word was God. In yes, this context, and so therefore you're saying that, that, the, that the word the who is Jesus is, is the Father who is God. the word is also God. Anyway, I've said my part, I can't go around in circles. We let the audience judge as to who has got the correct methodology. Furthermore, in the Greek it says there, 
Theos. It doesn't. It's not got the definite article. The word was the God. It doesn't say Hoton Theos. It just says Theos. And there are many Theoses, as you know, in the Bible. In um, John 10:34, God, with Christ, isn't it written? Yours, you are gods. The same word is used there for ordinary people. Theos. Pardon? Probably judges. Or... Yeah, in Psalm 82, 6, yes. So what we're observing here essentially is that this passage is not in indicating Jesus is God. It's just indicating that he becomes the expression of God. And then he does, he does the word of God because look what he says. I've repeated this a second time. He says, I have not come, to, I, I do not speak my word, but the word of God who sent me. So he's clearly distinguishing that he's not that word in the in the glorified sense that you're making him. Because if he was that, he wouldn't make this statement. He wouldn't say that, don't, I mean, that the word who, which is from God, which is not my word. He wouldn't say this. Furthermore, when, John, when in the same gospel, like in John 17, 3, where Jesus says, for this is eternal life, yes, that he may know you. So he's pointed to someone else as the only true God and whom you have sent, the Apostelos, yeah, he, Jesus Christ, he said, the messenger. He who knew me knew the Father and yeah, that's uh, new, that rejects mean, yeah. me, rejects the Father. So. Now, let me explain to you, with respect to you. Obviously, English is not your second, so I don't want to embarrass you, please. Okay? So, when he says, like you said, he that, he that knows me knows the Father, yes, I, I accept. What does he mean by this though? He simply means that you can only know God through Jesus. And I accept this because he sent to those people, those Jews who rejected him. So he's basically, you can only know God through me. I accept this. We can only know God in Islam through the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So all that, that's all that means, my friend. It doesn't mean something is God, no. It just means you know, because he represents God. When all authority is given to him, God gives him the authority. When he does all the miracles, God is the one doing it through him. Acts 2.22, Jesus Christ, a man, appointed by God, through whom God did many wonders, works and signs. God did signs through him. In Exodus 7.1, let me ask you, who parted the sea? Moses or God? Well, in one sense, Moses, in one sense, Moses, in another sense. Yeah, because what that means is God endowed him with that power to do so. But obviously you don't say he's God. So what making you reflect John's Gospel, as I tried to say earlier, I'm not sure if I mentioned it to you, there were three different authors of John's Gospel, five different redactors, redact mean editors, who changed, who changed things around, who added their things in. According to a lot of Christian scholars, they say the author of John's Gospel assumed Jesus would say something and has put those words into Jesus' mouth. The Jesus Seminar. Read up on the Jesus Seminar. Yeah, I mean, this, uh, this methodology which is supposed to show all the, the, this book has five different authors and three different redactors. Uh, these methods are always very speculative and uh, I don't think they are genuine historical methods. No, what I'm saying to you is that they're saying that, for example, these I am statements in John's Gospel, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Um, before Abraham was I am, the Father and I are one. He that has seen me has seen the Father. All these verses are verses which were put into the, according to Christian, not me, not, this is not Mustafa saying, these are Christian scholars who are saying this thing. Because the, the author of John's Gospel assumed that Jesus would say these things. And then he's put those words into Jesus' mouth. And a proof of this, these yeah, I am statements, they're not in Mark. I, I, agree, I agree that uh, the words that, that uh, the words of Jesus that we find in the Gospels uh, are not uh, sort of uh, perfectly precise words of Jesus. I appreciate because that. They are mainly teachings of the church. The church being the church, the church having been established by disciples of Jesus. So disciples of Jesus uh, wanted to well, they, they, they spread the teachings of Jesus and then they wanted to preserve these teachings in written form. Therefore, that was the motivation for writing the Gospel. So, so the, then you accept they so added... the Gospel of John and other Gospels are, uh, are uh, sort of, uh, accurate representations of the, of 
the teachings of the Ergi Church, and therefore that this is uh, this is the ground on which they stand. Right? Uh, so even if you say the thing about uh, the Pearl of Kujan, uh, the fact that it comes from the early church is sufficient to trust it as, uh, as an authoritative source about the, the teachings of Jesus and the true gospel. But that's what we're discussing about the legitimacy of that. It was added into one of the later manuscripts. This is what I'm trying to explain to you from, from the start because it's not in the Alexandrian text or the Codex um, uh, Synacticus. You know the earliest Greek... But, but, uh, so what uh, I'm saying I'm to you, sure, these were later... Sure why, why are bringing up the Alexander text or Codex Synacticus when they are comparatively late uh, in comparison Not the to Codex some, Synacticus, some you know you have... Earlier manuscripts, yeah, what I'm trying fragments to... of manuscripts. What I'm trying to say to you is the Codex of the Synacticus, which was roughly the third century manuscripts, in the in the variants of that, it doesn't have that particular prologue. I've, I've made my point, so there's no need to repeat it. These were later added on by the church fathers in different co codexes, like the Textus Receptus and other such codexes which were added in. So essentially speaking, these were variants. You understand what I mean? Just like in John 17, 5, that glorify me with the glory I had with you in the beginning. That is a textual variant. The earlier manuscripts did not have this one. Are you following what I'm saying to you, my friend? So these yeah. are so um, he, here we have. Uh, so regarding your, your claim that uh, that the prologue to, to John's Gospel was added later by some conspirators, this is uh, Papyrus 66, uh, which is a near complete codex of the Gospel of John, part of the collection known as the Bodmer Papyrus. From which year? From which year? So, they, so from uh, which year? Yeah. Different scholars differ. Um, one scholar says 200 AD, another says between 100 and 150 AD. So this is way before Codex Sinaitis. Not way before, it's, contemporary, uh, it's contemporaneous so, to it. And, and this includes uh, John, uh, the entire chapter 1. Yeah, but that doesn't prove anything. That's contemporaneous to the Codex Sinaiticus. But what does it say? What is it, okay, what does it say in there, in that papyri? Is it P66, did you say? Is it the P66? P66. Show me where it says P66. Can you open it? Because I can't see it clearly. Like, open what? Are you, are you, are you, that's it, open the text. So where does it say 60, P66? P66? Yeah, but where does it say from which year it is? Oh, from which year? Uh, here, I uh, think. Where? But that's just not, it's not speaking about the prologue though, is it? It doesn't mention the prologue. No, it, it, it contains the prologue. But it doesn't... You said clearly that the prologue to John 1 1 is in this early papyri from the second yeah. century. But it doesn't mention that. All it shows is John 1 1. It, does. it doesn't. <laughs> the, the, the prologue is John 1 1 to John, to John 1 14. Yeah, but it doesn't show that. It doesn't show this is where this particular verse was um, incorporated within the papyri. That's what you were trying to claim. You were trying so, to claim. So you are saying if we look at the, at the, at the papyri. It, it, it won't have the problem. That's right. Yes, because the P sixty six. I'll give you. I'll so give you. Are, so you are saying that this is uh, that this information is fake. That, no, I'm not. No, I'm saying you misunderstood what it's saying. What it's saying. What I'm saying to you is the Codex Sinaiticus is a third century. So like 270, 280. Yes, so this is later than this manuscript. Precisely. So it's been added in there. Don't... Well, if we have earlier version, which. Yeah contains the prologue and the later version which doesn't contain it, no, but we, we should give more credibility to the earlier version. No, but what I'm saying to you, the Codex Sinaiticus, it doesn't have that prologue, the main text of the New Testament, from the original it's not manuscripts. The main text. It, there, okay. are, there are manuscripts that are, uh, that are used to, to uh, establish the text of the New Testament other than Codex Sinaiticus. Show me, Codex. show me one, okay. 
all you do now is show me one complete manuscript. Complete I'm not manuscript. Complete. Okay. There are different, uh, there are different uh, manuscript witnesses to, uh, to different parts of the New Testament. So, for example, so except the first chapter of John is uh, in this papyrus uh, 66. It might be in some other early, early papyrus. It might be in some, uh, in some other source. And when we compile those sources, we we come up with sufficient evidence to establish the reliability of this fragment. Right? Yeah, but that doesn't so, dispute. That doesn't then negate the point that I've made in terms of the uh, no, original codex. How? Okay, how? Well, I'd like to hear this. Because we are not supposed to rely on a single book such as Codex Sinaiticus. No, but that's the earliest manuscripts in the completed form that you have. Those other ones that you made that's, mention. That's but, irrelevant. Okay, so it's irrelevant that the earliest sources you have is not relevant. No, I, I have already said that Papyrus 66 is an earlier source than Codex Sinaiticus. You agree? No, no. I, what I'm saying to you, the Papyrus 66 you've quoted that's from two. It's contemporaneous. It's not earlier. It's contemporaneous, meaning same time. Contemporaneous with with the original writer of the John's Gospel. Yeah, with the Codex Sinaiticus. So what you're basically saying, I told you earlier, oof, that there were variants. There are variants so of Codex, that. Codex Sinaiticus uh, was written between 330 and 360. According to conservative estimates, some say it was slightly earlier, but roughly about that time. Roughly around about that time. Because no one knows for sure exactly what date, what time, what month. Yeah, so Papyrus yeah. 66 is from like 150 to 200 years early. And it has Not the 152, to no, because you just, you just actually said in front of the camera that it's between 150 to 200. Yes, so, it's, so depending what variation of the Codex Sinaiticus that you see, you just said it was a 300, whatever you quoted. Some scholars say it's slightly earlier, but that is, that's beside the point. The point still remains that the prologue was not there. This was a later an addition but added. I, I already thought to do that, that in Papyrus the Papyrus 66. 66 the, the, but we've the, already seen the Papyrus 66. The Papyrus 66, all you showed me is John 1. It doesn't say where the Papyrus stating um, that. Uh, portion is there in the beginning was the word and the word it doesn't show the prologue all you're saying is that is what's cited but it doesn't show it you're not showing it though that's the but thing that's based you're, on, on, uh, you're making a claim by, by scholars. No, but you're making a claim now you have to substantiate the claim so anyway the point well, being I, I we substantiated it with, uh, with uh, citation from Wikipedia if you don't post uh, Wikipedia then of course uh, of course we will have to go to some I trust the words that may be cited in the narrative. So, yeah, that's beside that. So, this continue to wrap up this point from John 1 1. It's clear he's not referring to himself as the Almighty God. Like in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, what do we see? We see that also um, Satan is God. Why is Satan God in, in 2 Corinthians 4 4? Why would such a term be used? I'm sorry, what? In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it says Satan, devil, he is God as well. Why, why, is, why is Satan God? Because these were loosely worded terms used at that time. Me and you could be a godly person or, or God. In Psalm, in the one you quoted correctly, in John 10, 34, what does it say? It says the following, you are gods in reference, and you accepted this just a short while ago, referencing judges who are referred to as gods as well. So. In essence, John is not preaching that Jesus is God. He makes a distinction between Jesus as God in that John 1.1. 1, 1. Jesus as God, Jesus speaks the words of God. He said, oh, I do not speak the word which God has given, but that is what has been given to me that I speak. I do not speak of my own volition. Of my own free will, I can do nothing. So I hear as I judge, and my judgment comes from God. For I seek not to do my will, but the will of God who has sent me. If he was a part of the second person of the Trinity, why doesn't he have his own will? That makes no sense. Why would he say, I only do God's will and I don't do my will? Is your will different? Don't you have a second will as a part of the second person of the Holy Trinity? Yeah, uh, I can, I can. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, with regards to the will question, uh, the will of Jesus uh, conforms to the will of the Father because they are the same nature and uh, given the totality of evidence from the uh, from the bible uh, so where does it say they're the same 
essence. Where does it say that in the Bible? No way. Uh, well, it's an, it's an implication from from uh, passages such as uh, such as the one saying where, where Jesus says, uh, "I and the Father are one." But that's one in purpose, uh, not in one in unity. You know that also, full well. Also from so you're that's, see, my friend. John, you know where you're not speaking. When you're not speaking. And I'm kind of losing my voice, so I have to wrap up soon. <laughs> okay, but, but that's you know, is, John, John 10 30 is another, not implying created in the beginning. Now, one by one second, you, because you <laughs> went on to John 10 30, it's important for me to respond to that. If you read the verses in context from 23, Christ is walking in the temple of the colonnade of Solomon. And the Jews say to him, If you are indeed the Messiah, tell us plainly. They don't say, if you are God, tell us plainly. They say, if you are the Messiah, he says to them, I've already told you so, yet you are not my sheep. Those who are my sheep, they follow what I have to say. For God who has given them to me, he has sanctified me and sent me. For no one can snatch them out of my hand, meaning when I give them, when I, when God has given the people the knowledge to understand that God wants them to worship him and him alone, Jesus has, has been sent by God, therefore you do as God wills. Jesus is that representative who does God's will and hence he makes the exclamation the father and I are one one in what in the purpose of bringing the Jews back to worshiping God no, one and in nature. not in one you know why because the Greek word there is hen h-e-n and hen means one in purpose the same word is used in John 17 20 to 23 when he says to the disciples I can become one with you and you can become one with me the same Greek word is used there hen just like in John 10 30 so it's one in purpose. Then you would have to say, by your logic, that John, that John 17, 21 to 23 is also making the disciples God as well, based on the point that if they are one with Jesus, the same Greek word is used. But the double Greek word is used in Mark 12, 28. When it says in Mark 12, 28, when the scribe asked Jesus, what is the greatest of all commandments? And Jesus says, hear thou, O Israel, your Lord God, the Lord is one. But over there, the one is a different Greek word called heis, not hen. And that is the cardinal one, one in whole, one in essence. But the one in John 10, 30 is hen. Hen is the same one in John 17, 21, 23, one in purpose. Because if you're saying no, it's one in essence, then you will have to say the disciples are also God as well, based upon your logic. Understand? Yeah, so, I mean, it is true that, uh, that God is one in the cardinal sense because there is just one God. <coughs> it is also true that Jesus and the Father are one in the sense of, I would say, nature, not in the... But, that's wrong, but you sense. can't make that conclusion. You know because why you can't make that conclusion? <coughs> because the, the, anyway. the context will determine. Anyway, I can see you out of breath. I don't you, want you, to... You throw a lot of uh, verses at me and it's been a while but at least it's been, at least it's been the, I, understand, I respect that. At least it's a better conversation than the preservation I'm of the Quran. I am, that's so fine. Just, I'm not speaking to anyone. One more thing about uh, another papyrus. Yeah, so I'm just being. 75, uh, it also contains the prologue to John's Gospel. It's dated to uh, late 2nd century or uh, by other people to late. It's, exa it's, contempor century. it's contemporaneous then. To, so this is the whole point I've been making all along, which you see. Anyway. Well, even me. if it is contemporaneous to Codex Sinaiticus, which is doubtful, uh, it doesn't mean that we should go with Codex Sinaiticus instead of going with these. But that you've accepted that papyri is not a completed manuscript. At least the Codex Sinaiticus, at least it is relevant. You know, it's very relevant. You know why it's relevant? Because when you're talking about additions and subtractions... Okay, well, okay let me ask you, in the Codex Sinaiticus, why didn't they put that in? In the Codex Sinaiticus, why didn't they put in the prologue to John's Gospel? Because you're emphasizing it's in the contemporaneous papyri. I'm saying to you, if that was the case, why didn't the Codex Sinaiticus, because the full uh, manuscript have this one Actually, one? Uh, I wasn't uh, familiar with this fact before, and I'm not familiar with that's at least, of scholars. At, at least that's honest, that's honest of you to say so. But anyway, my friend, listen, I've got to pray my prayer. My prayer time is running out. I've enjoyed, at least this was a better conversation. But in terms of the preservation, you've got a lot to read upon that. Anyway, do come well, next week. I think in terms of preservation, uh, we just want to have it both ways and claim that it is perfectly preserved down to the letter, but whenever there is a difference, you say that uh, bo both versions are true because both versions constitute so the same uh, 
Yeah. Anyway, I've enjoyed speaking to you. Thanks very much. All the best to you. Take care. What's your name, by the way? Mustafa. Mustafa. What's your name? Jacob. Okay, Jacob. Thank you so much. So at least this conversation had some sort of fruition to it in terms of discussing. It, had, it was, with due respect to him, he was a bit clueless on the preservation of the Quran. However, um, we had a discussion on the manuscripts in regards to John 1 1. Sometimes it can be a bit technical to follow, but it shouldn't be. It's straightforward stuff. And inshallah, make Allah guide him and understand who God is. Jazakumullah Haid. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. 